Hello everyone, Babenchi here. In this video I will be testing the weakest Ryzen processor, the Ryzen 3 1200, released in 2017. That CPU is based on AMD 14nm Zen microarchitecture. For sure, faster than older FX series. And it also brought AMD closer or in some cases suppressed Intel performance in terms of price to performance ratio. Through this was mainly in certain price segments and for multi-core tasks. The Ryzen 3 1200 has 4 cores and 4 frets with turbo clock of 3.4 GHz. Through in practice it runs at 3.1 GHz at full load. Its launch price was 109 USD. But I recently brought a used one in Lithuania for just 10 euros. Important thing that for first Zen CPUs, RAM is very important. So today I'm gonna use 16 gigs in dual channel, 3200 megahertz. Shadow of Tomb Raider. Let's start with a less demanding game. In regular scenes, the FPS average around 70 and can even exceed 100. However, in CPU-intensive areas, the FPS drops to 40-50 with noticeable stuttering in frame time graph. The CPU is constantly at 100% usage, so I can't run any background apps. But technically, I can. But I'm gonna lose some FPS. Counter-Strike 2 is that CPU good enough for cybersports? For a stable 120 FPS, quite not. Most of the time the FPS hovers around 70-80. Sometimes FPS reaches more than 100, but the frame time graph is kinda smooth and it's more than enough to play on 5K rating. Forza Horizon 5 Newer games now rely on creating a shader cache, which demands significantly CPU processing power. For example, on a i5-12400F this process takes around 2 minutes, while on Ryzen 3 1200 it takes around 6 minutes, 3 times more. As for gameplay smoothness, it's not ideal, the frame time graph has noticeable spikes, however the CPU still manages an average of 60-70 FPS, which is surprisingly good for this CPU. Locking the FPS to 60 can improve smoothness and provide a more consistent experience. Spider-Man Remastered Oh, nice background buddy! I had to wait about 5 minutes for the game to load, possibly due to shader caching. Although there were no indicators confirming this. Once loaded, the game runs about 40-50 FPS, with occasional drops to 30. However, FPS stability is quite poor, with frequent stutters and freezing, especially while exploring the world. Still, it's possible to complete the game despite these issues. I should also mention that CPU usage remains at a constant 100%, as expected with a 4-core CPU. Cyberpunk 2077 I choose settings that RTX 2060 can handle, with CPU intensive crowd settings on low. So, Cyberpunk is still one of the most demanding games for older 4-core CPUs. In terms of FPS, it generally holds around 30, which is quite good. Through it can drop as low as 25. In less demanding scenes, like combat, FPS can reach up to 40. However, the overall stability isn't ideal, so locking the frame rate to 30 can help. But the drops to 25 still occurs. And the frame time graph is flexing like a no copyright sound circle. Black Myth Wukong, the newest game in today's tests. Chinese masterpiece. 
social rating plus. But it runs terribly. Just look at the frame time graph. It's so choppy I could use at a handsaw. Despite this, it manages 40 50 FPS. As with Cyberpunk, locking the FPS to 30 improves stability, as unlike Cyberpunk, there are no drops to 25 FPS. However, shader compilation is brutal. To get this stuttery experience, first of all, you have to wait 30 minutes. But what can you expect from a CPU that costs only 10 euros? Is there any game that can deliver a stable 100 FPS? Wait, how I forgot about that? A 17 years old game can't run badly. Oh shit, here we go again. If serious, in intensive battlefield FPS drops to 60, but in quiet moments FPS is more than 100. The main issue that TF2 is optimized only for two cores, so it actually performs worse than CS2, which can utilize more than two cores. Just press F to those who are still using Ryzen 3 1200. You are heroes. What I didn't mention yet is power consumption. The Ryzen draws 44 watts at maximum CPU usage. For comparison, the i3 8100 uses 10 watts less while running at higher frequency of 3.6 GHz compared to Ryzen's 3.1 GHz. You might say that Ryzen can be easily overclocked for better performance, but today I tested it at full stock settings. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Have a great day.